Once again, a blessed Lord's Day to you, brethren, as well to our visitors. And we once again welcome everyone to our afternoon English worship service here in Cubao Reform Baptist Church. You know the phrase, take up your cross, is an idiom, which means to accept hardships in life. And this phrase was stated to be originated from the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament. So it means that this given meaning to this idiom was wrong. But the ignorance from this phrase is not only seen from its wrong interpretation, but can be seen also from the neglect of its application. Because there are people who are saying that they are Christians, but living like the world. And this should not be the case of us as believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why it is very important for God's people to understand the meaning of this phrase according to the Scripture and its universal demand for all Christians. Because we know that the gospel that we believe unto salvation has also its demands on the kind of life that we should live as God's people. This is one of the secondary significances of the cross after its importance for salvation of sinners. We already understand this from our previous series loving our fellow brethren because from that series we study that the apostle john uses the cross of the lord jesus christ to challenge god's people to be ready to sacrifice for brethren as an application of their love this is what we can find in first john chapter 3 verse 16 and following and for us not to neglect the applications from our previous series, I will be having some series of sermons in the New Testament with this same teaching about the demand of the gospel as an example for believers. So we will start with this series from this passage about self-denying discipleship. That's why let us open up our Bibles once again. And our preaching passage will be taken from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 9, beginning verse 21, down up to verse 24. Once again, Gospel according to Luke, chapter 9, verse 21, up to verse 24. And he strictly charged and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. So once again, praise be the Lord upon the reading of His Holy Word. After the series of teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ that caused the large group of His followers to turn their backs on Him from the preceding events, now the Lord began to incite fuller participation to His ministry for His disciples, especially the twelve. That's why we can understand from this chapter that the twelve not only became observers, but began to participate in the ministry of Jesus as His fellow missionary agents. That's why the beginning of chapter 9, we can understand that Jesus gave them the authority to minister with Him. And this greater participation of the disciples result uh, for their greater revelation about the Messiahship of the Lord Jesus Christ and its demands 
for His followers. That's why after the confession of the Apostle Peter about the coming death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Himself uses that confession to expose what will happen to Him in Jerusalem. He will be killed by the scribes, by the religious leaders, and the priests. And this is something that is very important for us to understand in this passage because the Lord uh, followed that instruction with the command that His coming teaching to these disciples are ex exclusive to them. And this is not only because of the wrong understanding of the Jews about the Messiah, that the Israelites are expecting that the coming Messiah will be the one to deliberate them from the slavery, from the Roman Empire, but also because of its importance that the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ on this passage, that's why it is exclusive, are for the members of God's kingdom. If we are believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we better listen to the instruction of Christ. And we should follow it because the reason why it is exclusive because this should be the application of those who genuinely believe the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can understand this exclusivity not only from the command of the Lord, but also from the messianic title that he used. He used the title Son of Man. And it does not only, it, it, it does not mean uh, about humanity of the Lord Jesus Christ, but the title Son of Man alludes from the expectation that was prophesied by uh, Daniel on his prophetic book, chapter 7, about the mysterious human figure who received the glory that belonged to the Ancient of Days. This is the messianic title that Jesus used. Uh, there are many teachings of him that use this title, but this is unfamiliar to the Jews because he wants his coming instruction from this passage to be observed only by his genuine people. That's why these disciples primarily receive a deeper understanding about Christ so they can observe what really it takes to become his followers. So after Jesus gives the prediction of his coming cross, the same cross was also significant, significant to the believers as they follow the Lord. So this is our passage. That's why let me draw this message as an instruction for us. There is a God-given instruction from the cross of salvation for true Christians to crucify oneself as life's governing influence. There is a God-given instruction from the cross of salvation for true Christians to crucify oneself as life's governing influence. We have here in our passage the coming cross of the Lord Jesus Christ needed for the salvation of sinners. But the same cross was used by the Lord for His ongoing demands for His genuine followers. This daily taking of the cross is not the literal crucifixion. Because this is something that already understood by his disciples in this passage. So it is not the literal Roman capital punishment of crucifixion. But it also does not mean afflictions and sufferings like what I said from my introduction. We Filipinos are very familiar from that kind of saying that they are using the cross for their sufferings as they obey God. That's why Filipinos are saying, yung hindi ko 
uh, kapatid sa pananampalatay ang naging asawa, yan ang krus ko ng kalbaryo, that's, that does not the meaning of the cross. Because the cross of our passage means denying oneself. This is the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, let Him deny Himself. This is the cross. And it is in the aspect of governing influence to one's life. We should reject ourselves as the captain of our life if we follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is something that we can understand because from this same passage, there is this claim of the Lord Jesus Christ from two aspects of the life of His followers. And I want to present this from these two features. First, every action. And second, entire being. Christ has claims from this aspect. So let us understand first, every action. This is what we can understand from the words of Jesus to His disciples about the cause of discipleship. Because there is this word in verse 23 that Jesus stated daily. Only Luke added this detail. If you compare Matthew 16 verse 24 and Mark chapter 8 verse 34, the words are, take up His cross and follow me. It is unique to look. Why is that? Because it emphasizes the, um, the metaphorical use of taking up our cross as teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not the single act of martyrdom. It is not the literal crucifixion because it should be taken daily. It emphasizes the metaphorical use of the teaching of the Lord. And also, it is important for us to understand the following words. Verse 23, follow me. After denying oneself, on the other hand, there should be recognition to the Lord Jesus Christ, not only from our words, but also from our actions. Because after we reject oneself, as the purpose of our life, the rightful place for one's purpose is our Savior. If we are Christians and we can apply it by observing His commands, because according to the Lord Jesus Christ, His followers should not only be identified to Him, but must also Take actions by following Him. This is the instruction of the Lord. That's why denial of self-autonomy as cross-bearing discipleship involves the daily display of total obedience to Christ. That's how you take up your cross. This is because true faith does not only make the person affirms the teaching of our Lord. True faith makes that person to obey the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. This means that as Christians, there should be no opposition to the words of Christ by putting one's desire or one's own will against our Lord. The only response, rightful response of God's people to the teachings of Christ is submission. This is very important for us because it is not God who will force this cross to us. Instead, as Christians, we should be intentional in this act of discipleship. This is a character of the Christian life. 
from the beginning, from the end, because we will live on this in the daily basis. Taking our cross daily. That's why we should persevere in faithfulness to the words of Christ. We should mature in our obedience to the commands of Christ. So for Christians, there cannot be an attitude of habitual negligence to the words of our Savior, either from our personal reason or because of public pressures, one's feelings, circumstances, and even oppositions of the world are not reasons for us to neglect the commands of Christ. We know this as the sin of omission. And for those who claim followers of Jesus Christ, there cannot be a lifestyle that involves deliberate sinning or active sinning because of temptations or deceptive advantages. We cannot live in these kinds of life if we are God's people because we should be obedient to His command. Because as a result of our salvation, God makes believers to truly live as His servants, not a servant of oneself or not servants of sin. This is the kind of life of God's people. Not just because we need self-discipline, but because of the reality of renouncing oneself as the authority of one's life if we are in Christ. There is an attitude called peacock syndrome in which a person wants to attract the attention of other people. This attitude is called, through this term, because like a male peacock which displays its colorful feathers to attract its own kind, that kind of person is willing to do things, even unnecessary, just to gain attention. And there are many times that this kind of attitude is inappropriate. And one of that is when we obey God. Because it is not for gaining attention for ourselves. And obedience to God primarily not for us. True obedience to God takes renouncing oneself just to obey the words of the Savior, our Savior. That's why seek to grow in living for Jesus by applying the Word of God in every sphere of your life. Seek to grow in this truth. Because this is, big, this is our life as Christians. Because the center of our life is not ourselves anymore. It is our Lord and Savior. And there are clear teachings of the Word that should direct our lives. And if there are none, I can say there are significant principles. This is something that we will study in our Singles Fellowship later. Love, courtship, and marriage. There are principles relevant to every sphere of our life as, as God's people. This kind of life that should be conducted under submission to our Lord is our rightful response because 
of His great blessing of salvation to us. This is our case as God's people because from the beginning of our salvation, we are confronted by the only message of God for forgiveness of our sin. And that's that we should acknowledge. And that's the beginning of the kind of life to be conducted under the Word of God. This is our case if we truly believe there are public duties of our faith. So the Word is central both in the life of the church and its ministries. But there are also private duties that we should not neglect to conduct under the same Word of God. Because if Christ and not ourselves is the authority for our life, we will live in total obedience to His every command for us. This is an application as we bear our cross. In Christian history, Eric Liddell was a well-known Christian athlete who later became a missionary. There was a movie about his life which was titled Chariots of Fire. One of the events presented in this movie about his life was during the 1924 Paris Olympics because when the competition of 100-meter dash was scheduled for Sunday on which Eric Liddell was expected to win the gold medal, he withdrew from that competition. Despite all his preparations for that competition, despite the public criticisms that he received, Eric Liddell was determined to obey God more than anyone else. But at the same time, Eric Liddell showcased his commitment to the sports by joining other race that were scheduled uh, for different days, like the 400-meter race when he won the gold medal, the 200-meter race when he won the bronze medal. This is an example from history of a Christian that is living according to the teachings and principles of the Word. Because denial of self-autonomy, which is the cross-bearing discipleship, can be demonstrated by complete obedience to God's words. That's why every action, there is this claim of the Lord Jesus Christ for His people. But not only that, entire being. This is another thing that we can see in our passage because another truth that we can understand from the words of Jesus to His disciples about the cause of discipleship is in verse 24 on which Jesus says, For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. This is the first group of words that supports the truth that cross-bearing discipleship is self-denial. So this is one of the words. There are three word, group of words that started with the word for. And verse 24 is one of those. And it's, it's structured in a chiastic way that centered on the truth about losing one's life. So losing one's life in our passage is not a means for gaining salvation. 
but losing our life in this passage is the right kind of losing our life if we have eternal salvation. In keeping in terms of being a follower of Jesus, the life of a disciple was given by God not to keep for oneself, but to spend for Jesus. This is the right kind of losing. It has a supreme and compelling reason. And this is our assurance of salvation. That's why denial of self-autonomy as the cross-bearing discipleship involves the daily display of the total claims of Jesus to the whole person. This is what we should display. It is not just the acts that a Christian should carry according to Jesus, but Christians themselves ultimately belongs to Him. This exposes the wisdom that if we are genuine believers, we will not going to find our satisfaction and security through self-centeredness. Because that kind of life that values one's existence more than Jesus is incompatible for eternity with Him. But for true believers, there is this priority for Jesus above our own existence. That's why our present life has the true meaning. Because mankind's purpose in this life it's not intended for anyone. It is intended for the Lord. God created man for Himself. And God redeemed man for Himself. Furthermore, in such a life that places the Lord Jesus Christ above all things, there is assurance of salvation because this is an evidence of genuine faith. That's why we should observe this kind of life. If we are Christians because in periods of trials and sufferings, the believers will continue in faith, faithfully obeying the Lord. Because self-preservation is not our ultimate goal. And self-satisfaction is not the true comfort of this life. And on the other hand, temporal blessings will not become idols of life. Instead, will be a means to glorify God. Because our God gives meaning to our life, not just His blessing. Eternity is glorious because God is there. He gives the meaning to our existence. So because of salvation, believers will obey God, not only because of His commands, but because we are for Him. Part of renouncing oneself as the authority of life is to make God the authority, not only on what one is doing, but over one's entire being. In our daily life, too much preoccupation with self has numerous negative effects, not only in matters relating to others, 
but also in some deadly accidents. Like what happened in 2017 with the number of selfie-related deaths that were reported. Now, if there are these serious consequences of so much focus on oneself, let us not forget this important kind of life as followers of Jesus that self-centeredness should have no place for us. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it, the words of our Savior. Seek to grow in living for Jesus by devoting all your life to His purpose and glory. This should be our application. This is because Christians, Jesus is not only our Savior. Jesus also is our Lord. Lord in, in not just part of our life, but in every aspect of it. Jesus is our Lord. If we are His people, this further emphasizes to us our rightful response of total obedience to God, both in public and private, because Christ should be glorified in these spheres of our life. We should not only desire to glorify God in some parts of our lives and treat others that it is for our own benefit alone. For example, glorifying God in our public duties like worship, but in our private life, we neglect this truth. Public and private life of believers should glorify God. But I also want to remind us, because there are professors of faith that habitually neglect the meetings of the church because they, they have this wrong uh, idea that they glorify God in their private life. It means it's enough for their obedience to God. They think that I am a godly worker, a godly person in my family, and think they can neglect public meetings of the church. Public and private, we should glorify God this is our case once again. Because from the gospel, we submit to the authority of God that begins our life of continuing progress in faith under His same authority. This is our case. If we are believers of the Lord Jesus. So in the public aspect of faith, there is the total authority of God. Total authority in life of the church and its ministries. That's why in New Testament writings, Jesus was called the head of the church because Jesus has the authority alone in life of the church and its ministries. But at the same time, in our private life, we should not neglect the authority of God to us as individual Christians. Because again, if Jesus Christ and not ourselves is the authority of our lives, we will spend our lives and what we have to glorify Him. 
This is the kind of our life. Because those who enter to the narrow gate will walk on the narrow way. Those who believe the cross of Jesus Christ will live as cross bearers. But let me remind you with this. Whatever sacrifices we need to make to bear our cross, it cannot be compared to the eternal life that is achieved for us by our Savior who was crucified. That's why it is fitting for us to be reminded about the attitude of the man who traveled to the Waudani tribe of Ecuador to spread the gospel. But he and four other missionaries were tragically killed by these tribesmen. But despite this kind of sacrifice and service, we know that the Lord Jesus is deserving. Because for this man, who was Jim Elliot, he wrote in his diary, He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. And we do not need to become martyrs to have this attitude. We just need to bear our cross daily for this God-glorifying kind of life. Because denial of self-autonomy, which is the cross-bearing discipleship for God's people, is demonstrated by giving our life and what we have for His purpose and glory. That's why let us reflect in every action and in our entire being that Jesus has the authority because as Christians, this is the cross that we should bear daily. But if you are still a stranger to God's saving grace, if in, God, if in God's providence you are a sinner, or you are a false professor of faith, the timely reminder for you is not about the cross that you must bear, but the one who bore the cross 2,000 years ago. Because apart from this truth, what only remains to you is your eternal punishment. There is no forgiveness of sin apart from that message. So listen to this truth about the Savior who bore the cross intended for Him by God. Because this Savior is Jesus Christ who was crucified and resurrected from the dead. Respond to this gospel with repentance of your sins and believe Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. There is this blessing of eternal life. And this is the reason why Christians can bear their cross daily. Because this promise of eternal salvation from that truth 
we can realize those who are cross bearers now will be the crown wearers in the presence of God. Let's pray. Gracious God and our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reminder that your gospel is not an elementary truth of faith, but it has its continuing demand in our life as your people, not only in loving one another as Christians, but like what we understood this afternoon by bearing our cross daily. It is the Lord Jesus who said, we should take our cross and bear it daily. That's why help us to indeed apply these words in our life, that in our every action and in our entire being, may we display that we have another king, not the king of this world, but our King Jesus Christ, who was our Savior. So help us to submit to your word in every sphere of our life. Help us, O oh Lord, to, do, to devote for you all our life and what we have for your purpose and for your glory because this is the meaningful kind of life and we can rest assured that as we obey you, you are our faithful, loving, and compassionate God who will keep us until the end. That's why we pray that may you help us to indeed not only listen, but to obey your words. And we commit also to you those who are strangers from your saving grace. May you exalt the Lord Jesus Christ for who He is and what He has done as the only means for salvation. And may you grant repentance and faith to our visitors this afternoon and also to our children that like what we had prayed this morning, that may this day indeed be the day of their salvation. Thank you, our Lord, for this blessed day that we, we are reminded of your glory and your graciousness to us, not only in creation, but also in redemption. May we pray that this truth may be a part of our equipping to be holy and to be useful for you for these coming days of this week. Until once again, we come together to exalt your great and holy name in this place in our worship. That's why we commit to you all these things. We pray all of this in the name of our blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For our closing hymn, we will about to sing a hymn that will remind us that the gospel that we receive demands a kind of life for God's people. But at the same, but at the same time, I like uh, the, this hymn because it uses the phrase, something for thee. And this is because whatever we sacrifice to obey and serve God, it cannot be compared to what God had accomplished for our